Yes, indeedy, I've got a brand spanking new 47 megapixel Liger SL2 right here in my right hand, which is why I've come out here today to take some pictures of some deer. Obviously, with a 35 millimeter lens, that's the obvious choice subject to take, right? And of course, I've come appropriately dressed today. I mean, you don't want to scare off the deer, yeah, when you're taking photos of them. So I've come camouflaged as the sun. You're probably thinking Likers should be for street photography or perhaps taking photos of your children on a skiing holiday in the Alps. Ha! Too obvious. The SL2 is really more versatile than that. Although I'm not here to get serious wildlife shots, just some nice fine detail with that 47 megapixels. Anyways, a good chance to take some pictures of some deer before they're um, shot. It's culling season which is a posh way of saying they're going to be shot in the head. A bullet through the temple. Probably. Oh, and I don't know why it's always raining when I'm doing a Leica review. I mean, you know, super expensive camera. Rain. It's a good match. Let's hide under that very beautiful set of trees over there. Spoiler alert, the camera didn't break. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? My lab mic transmitter did though, not so funny. So I stuck with the backup sound from the shotgun mic. So it does get a bit windy in parts, just so you know. Okay, so while we wait for the rain to go away, let's talk a little bit about the SL2 body. What exactly is new with the SL2? At first glance, it looks kind of the same as before, but once you hold it in your hands, you notice there's a new recess here, which makes it feel a lot more comfortable in the hands when you're shooting with it. And generally it's got more grip going on before it just had the grippy bits on the back, but now it goes all the way to the front. Oh, there we are. Apart from the grip, the OG SL was a bit bald, smooth on the front. The SL2 has the grippy bit all the way around and it makes it look better with the redesigned hump, which looks beefier. They redesigned this bit here just to make it look a bit more shapely, a bit more sexy sort of SLR-like and it looks great. In the hands, the SL2 feels more comfortable in the hands with that recess. It does have a very pretty face, doesn't it? I mean, when you look at porn all the time, camera porn obviously, you kind of get desensitized to it. And whenever you see a new camera, you just think, yeah, okay, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, not really that excited, but this, whoo. Oh, there's deer over there. Which is pretty good timing as the rain is just about stopping now, but it doesn't matter too much because this is weather sealed IP54. Don't know what that means either, but you know, it sounds good, doesn't it? It takes a good splashing from all kinds of angles, drool, whatever. Yes, this thing is thoroughly robust and it feels that way when you first pick this thing up. It is surprisingly hefty. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it's all metal. The center part here, that's die cast metal, but the top and bottom plates, that's all machined aluminium. I don't know why I did that. Other relevant but otherwise boring information includes the dual UHS-2 SD card slots. And on the flip side, that flap reveals ports, full-size HDMI and USB-C. But I can't help but feel that the flap is quite a contrast to the solid metal feel of the camera. I'm not expecting them to make it out of metal, but it is a little bit flip-flappy. And on the back here, that's kind of new, that's different. Before you had the four buttons, two on either side of the screen, now you've just got button layout which is similar to the other cameras the Q2 the M10 those three buttons are all for your left hand to fiddle with so your right hand can fiddle with something else so this here is a oh, sorry for the middle finger what we have here is gorilla glass and when I say gorilla glass I don't mean glass made by gorillas in a factory somewhere okay off we go to get some deer photos now my whole logic behind this shoot today is um well there isn't too much logic but with 47 megapixels you should be able to crop it and get a decent shot because I'm not going to be able to get too close right dressed like a lemon got to be subtle as subtle as you can be in that color it's their turf so I don't want to get too close I don't want to frighten them I don't want to scare them because they might hear me say oh I'm gonna take a shot and then next thing you know it I got an antler up the bum no don't want to do that with 47 megapixels it has exactly the same megapixel count as a Panasonic S1R so it's probably the same sensor inside of this same scene, but this is different. The AF system is interesting. You've got these AF profiles to customize the speed and sensitivity, but curiously, children and pets have been grouped into one. Perhaps as they have the same tendency to be random and salivate a lot? Who knows? Okay, team sports, no runner, wild, okay, wildlife. So this has face and body detect. So it picks up on bodies, not just faces. That's a camera body, that, that doesn't work and wildlife doesn't work but human subjects it detects 
Look, my fingers detected some selfie-obsessed numpties. Now they will switch between motion or focus priority depending if your subject is moving. It works decently even when the subject is turned around, although the face detection isn't as sticky as some other face detections and it doesn't have eye detect. But it feels like the AF is pretty lively. And you can be shooting sports, then you've got 10 FPS, mechanical shutter, or 20 FPS electronic shutter. Now this is going to seem like I'm stating the bloody obvious here, but that 47 megapixels provides for a bum load of fine detail. There's just two glass surfaces over the centre, RGB and IR filter. Without the need for an AA filter results should be sharper. And with the superb 35mm Summicron optics, you can crop in and still get crispy goodness. The shut on this is really nicely dampened and when I'm shooting up close, and I have to with a 35mm lens, it doesn't scare them off. And another thing, that viewfinder is fantastic. The magnification on this, 0.78 times, it makes it as big as medium format cameras. One of the neat additions to the SL2 is five axis in body stabilization, which you kind of hope for when you're dropping 6K on a camera, right? But you do get a nice little bonus in the video department. It shoots 4K, 60p, full frame. Now the Panasonic S1H doesn't even do that. It does 4K, 60p, but it's cropped. Colours are good, but that in-body stabilisation gets you some nice rock steady footage, even when you're shooting handheld. Now this neat little touch, in the quick menu you can easily flick from photo to video mode, and all of the settings are independent. Photo, video, photo, video. So this can shoot its own log profile. Yo, video gamma, here we go. When you shoot internally, it's all 8-bit, although you've got hybrid log, gamma, rec, 709 and 2020 options. The Leica log provides some nice 4K footage, providing more dynamic range than the natural picture profile. Although you can shoot 4K 60p full frame, interestingly it has a limitation of not allowing you to shoot in log profile. Ah, current video resolution with L-log, H-log can only be recorded via HDMI. Yes, it's a Leica, it costs more, but you know, it's made in Germany and it's not just a simple rebadge, nor is it a mild update to the SL. It looks better, it feels better, it shoots better, but with the ability to shoot that 4K 60p at full frame, even if it is just with the natural picture profile, is quite a profound statement. It's not going to be affordable for all, but with a good stills and video mode, it does seemingly offer it all.